The anointing is just as strong and just as good. You know. Amen. Two or three gather in His name. We're there in the midst. And this morning I got a message that I, I heard Him saying yesterday, but I knew it was for today, so I waited to do it for today. And uh, it's in Isaiah 28, verse 15. Isaiah 28 and 15. And uh, it's a scripture that is so powerful, I've, I've never heard anybody else preach on it. I preached on it a few years ago. God gave it to me then, but He's brought it back up. And uh, But I've still never heard anybody else preach on it. doesn't mean nobody else knows it. I've just never heard anybody else preach on it. And it's Isaiah 28, and it's verse 15 through 18. And uh, Isaiah 28, I said 15, there it is. Because I was looking at verse 13 when I said that. That's what's throwing me off there. Uh, now, what I want to talk about this morning is in verse 15. And it says, Because you have said we've made a covenant with death. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it talks about a covenant with death. Amen? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And in verse 18 it says, And your covenant with death shall be disannulled. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's the two parts I want to use to start with, is that people have made a covenant with death, and yet God says a verse or so later that your covenant with death shall be disannulled. Now, their covenant with death was something on the matter of, in verse 15, we have made a covenant, God's reading their mind, it says, because you have said we have made a covenant with death, with hell we are in agreement, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it will not come to us, Okay? Mm -hmm. For we've made our refuge and have understood and we have hidden ourselves. They have hidden themselves in a covenant with death that they have made. Simplified version is, I won't be here for the worst. Mm -hmm. I hear people all the time say, what if there is a nuclear war? It won't make any difference because we'll never know where we're going. Mm -hmm. It'll be over just like that. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. That's maybe this be just one city. Maybe... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, maybe it just be two cities, maybe three cities. It may not be the whole world annihilated, but they've made a covenant with death that says even if we die, it doesn't matter. Because we'll never feel a thing. Okay? Covenants with death, the Lord's been ministering to me that He wants to disannul covenants we've made with death. So many of us have made covenants with death and never knew we were making covenants with death. Men, for example, saying, all the men in my family die at age 55. Or all the women in my family die of breast cancer. Or all the people in my family all have hypertension. Or they all have sugar diabetes. Or they all have... Every one of those things is covenants with death that we have made with the words of our mouth. That we have sealed a covenant. The word covenant means to cut. It means to cut. You know, like, you know, like in old cowboy movies with the Indian and the white man be blood brothers. Yeah. It means we've cut a covenant with an evil that's out there and we've covenanted with it is that's how we're going to die. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm going out. And because I've covenanted with it, now I don't have to worry about it. Now I can have some peace. Because I know that, that sooner or later, no man in my family lives past 55. I've got a, an uncle that used to say that and a, and a cousin that wasn't supposed to live past 55 and another that says, I'm going to quit saying that. But it's almost like I can do anything I want. I am immune to anything else because I know I'm going to die of that. So, eat, drink, be merry. Because what? Tomorrow you die. Covenants with death. Breast cancer runs in our family. That's how we're going to die. Insanity runs in some families. Oh, covenants with death. And Jesus said in verse 18 that your covenant with death shall be disannulled. Now that's pretty good, isn't it? That's right. See, we've all made covenants with death and not realized it. We make other covenants. It's like James Bond movies, where you know the spy movies, where if you get caught, you're supposed to take this cyanide pill. Uh -huh. You're supposed to you're supposed to end it yourself because at least you have control of your final exit, yeah. which is a book called Final Exit a few years ago that had all kinds of ways to commit suicide because you need to be in charge of your end-of-life decisions. Sounds good, doesn't it? Notice how they make it sound positive? That's what these people were doing. They're saying it's hopeless. There is no hope in the end. We're going to die anyway. 
So let's choose how we go. Covenants with death. Like James Bond type movies. Like I said, put that, put that little pill under your tongue. And if you ever get arrested and look like you're going to go to jail, how many real estate people has got caught? How many them doggone financial people has got caught? When everything starts to go, what do they do? They end that life because they can't bear to live a life that's not the life they lived before. Yeah. Amen? They've made a covenant with death. When I can no longer live the life I want to live, I'm going to control it. Yeah. I'm not going to prison. Huh? Mm -hmm. You watch Ritzy people. They get accused of child molesting. They will kill themselves rather than take a chance on going to jail. Even if they're not guilty, they've made a covenant with death that that's not going to happen to me. There are people that make covenants with death all the time that I'm not having surgery. So and so of my family had surgery for that, and they didn't last no time at all. That family member's like that, haven't you? A covenant with death. Yes, I'm down to half a lung, but I'm not stopping smoking that cigarette. Because if I'm going to go, I'm going to go out my way. Amen? Making a covenant with death. Someday these things are going to kill me. Amen? They're going to kill me yet. That's a covenant with death, isn't it? Well, you're going to die. Well, I'm going to die anyway. I may as well... Huh? That's a covenant with death. See, the devil has got us made covenants with death when we say out our mouth all the time, you've got to die of something. Yeah. You know, I drive 90 miles an hour, but you've got to die of something. Huh? Where you going? You can't swim and you're going whitewater rafting. Yeah, but you've got to die sometime. That's a covenant with death. And it says in verse 18 that God says your covenant with death shall be disannulled. Amen. And that's what we're believing for this morning is God. To, and that's why I'm taping it for people that, that's not here. Maybe get the same thing. They've got to get the covenant with death. This uh no. Yeah. yeah, I know heart disease runs in my family. And I don't drink and I don't smoke, but I weigh 400 pounds. But you got to die something. And I may as well die happy. Oh, happy happy family. It's a covenant with death. Well, I'd rather wear out than rust out. That's a covenant with death. We don't need covenants with death. Nope. Death is the enemy. Nice. We don't need to make an agreement with death that if I'm going to go, I want to control how I'm going to go. There are people out there right now saying, I'm never going to the nursing home. Old people commit suicide at a higher rate than young people do, and they don't talk about it on the TV, and they don't talk about it on them things, because the demographics are not for a sense for a for a afternoon school special about old people that commit suicide. They look at each other and murder suicide is so common in elderly people it's ridiculous. They look at one another and say, Don't let me get put in the home and they say, Well, there ain't no way to avoid that, but us taking it into our own hands. You will we'll over medicate together, and it's somehow romantic. If teenagers kill each other for love, old people do. And nobody talks about it. It's a covenant with death that's cheating God out of using the last part of your life because you deemed it not usable. Amen. And that's the truth. Amen. That, well, God can't use me anymore because I ain't going to the home. Well, I ain't either. But my, my answer is not to make it a covenant with death, but made a covenant with the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ Amen. that I'll be able to walk and talk and breathe Amen. and preach Amen. all the days of my life. Amen? Amen. See, I want to make a covenant with life and not a covenant with Amen. death. Amen. People say it all the time. If I get in that kind of shape, just don't plug me. Well, don't plug me up. Amen. And nobody will have to decide Amen. to unplug Amen. me. That's right. I'll, if I stay plugged into life. Amen. If I stay plugged into life. Amen. Amen. Then I don't have to worry about somebody coming to unplug Amen. me. Amen. But once the enemy gets you to agree with this, is going to take you out. That I don't care if you survive cancer 50 years, it's eventually going to take you out. Or blood sugar is eventually going to take you out. If it comes down to be an amputee or die, I just soon die. People make those covenants with death before they get there. And then the devil says, well, good, well, this said it has to be amputated. Don't make no covenant like that. Amen. We're going to live. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us and quickens our mortal bodies. Amen. By His Spirit. But look who does the disannulling. He says, I will disannul your covenant with 
death. Isn't that something? Amen. Your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. Woo. Now that's good. Yeah. And you know what's in between the two verses? Verse 16 is between them. Mm-hmm. Between them making a covenant with death. Them deciding they're going to die, and that covenant even includes hell. It says there is no hell, there is no life after death, you're just going to cease. You're just going to disappear, so when it gets painful for you, you just check on out. When life gets unbearable for you, you just check on out. When emotionally you can't focus anymore, you just go on out. They're trying to make it legal for people to kill themselves all over the country. Yep. Doctors to assist for people who ain't got enough nerve to pull the trigger. Huh? But not just for... They, they, to start with, they said, well, just for people that have, uh, what do you call that? A terminal illness. And then it was just for people that want to. People that are depressed. Well, people that are depressed don't need a There's doctor. Young kids so, there, 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 darn there. right. It's crazy. They made a covenant with death. But now look what God does in the middle. Look at verse 16. We used to sing this. Oh, yeah. It says, Behold, I lay in Zion. Let me sing it in a minute. You may have that oh, yeah. Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation. Yeah. What is our life to be built on? Uh, a foundation. Uh, Jesus. Uh, amen. Jesus. A stone. A yeah. tried stone. A precious yeah. corner stone. A sure foundation that he that believes shall not make haste. Amen. Amen. I didn't know that verse was between there. I was looking at the concordance. I was looking at it and God, and God asked me, he, wrote it. he said, what's in between 15 and 18? And I said, I don't know, but I better look and look. He said, sure not Jesus. He said, right between the verses. Right in the middle of interrupting my covenant with death. Huh? A sure foundation that I can build my life on. And it says, they sh- I'm going to read it one more time here. Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation that he that believes shall not make haste. haste. That word haste means to get in a hurry mm-hmm. and end something yeah. when it ain't over. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Bail out of something before it's time. Give up on something before God's ready to give up on it. Amen? Mm-hmm. Give it up on yourself when God's got your best days to come. Mm-hmm. We used to sing it. What was you saying? I lay in Zion for a foundation of stone. I lay in Zion for a foundation of stone. Boom, 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 a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, a sure foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, and he believed the shadow shall not make case. But the other part was better than that. Wonderful! Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, wonderful. Counselor, the Prince of Peace. And I'm not saying it ain't no good, but what I'm telling you is this foundation is a wonderful counselor, a Prince of Peace, a mighty God, amen. All the things on the Christmas card, you know, everybody sings it out at Christmas. But He is wonderful. And this is the foundation that I'm building my life on. As I'm building my life on that foundation, it says, He that believes shall not make haste. As I believe. Jesus said this, You're not blessed because you know the words He said. You're blessed because you do the words that He said. And if He said, Take no thought, take no thought for tomorrow. Amen. Don't make no covenant for tomorrow. You're not tomorrow yet. Don't decide how you're going out. Because we may just go up and sit out anyway. Amen. We may just leave this world just a giggling. Amen? Amen. But he's got, a, he's got a sure foundation. I want to look at just a couple of these words. Covenant means to cut. You're either cutting a covenant with death or you're cutting a covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, yes. Amen? That's why we said, hang on to God's unchanging hand. That hand was pierced for me. Yes. It's still holding on to me. Amen? Amen. How beautiful heaven must be. Land of the blessed and the free. How was it? Haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven is going to be. And I want to look at that word believes there for a minute. Hmm. Believes means to believe. I can do that. (laughs) But it means to build up. Is what the word means. Remember it said foundation, foundation, foundation. 
what it said there, right? Stone, tried stone, precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believes. Believes means to build up. I build on the foundation when I believe. I've got a sure foundation. It won't move. It won't crack. It won't turn sideways. But I've got a sure foundation, but I believe. It says to build up, to support. Isn't that something? That's what believe means. It means to build up and support. It'll hold you up in the weak times. It'll hold you up when you're thinking about making a covenant with death. It'll make you up when you're thinking you might be better off in heaven. It'll hold you up because it's belief. And it's belief that's not out here on its own, but it's on a sure foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not built on sand. It ain't built on sand, is it? Nope. Let me give you the next one for it. The, the, the word there, it means to, to build up or support as a parent or a nurse oh. takes care of a child. Can you see that? Yep. That as I believe on Him, He supports me and He'll nurse me if He has to back the strength and cause me to have what I need to be immune to the things in His life. That's one of the things I, I guess I will talk about. I don't want to talk about breastfeeding, but I guess I will talk about breastfeeding for a minute. God is darn smart. Yes, he, is. he didn't have formula. He didn't have bottles. He didn't have all this junk. He just now figuring out that you know, like the last few years, when I was a kid, you know, Everybody breastfed apparently because they didn't have the pet milk and carnation milk. They didn't have anything like that. And they didn't have nothing. You were supposed to breastfeed. By the time my younger brothers came along, you know, 40 years ago, everybody had semi lacking, some other lacking, some other thing, you know. Everybody always oh, better than mother's milk. Then they figured out they're missing all the antibiotics and all, all the immunities to the swine flu that's been passed down. That's why old people ain't keep know from the swine flu because. The ones old enough to have been there pass the anti things to it yeah. on down to their children through their breast milk. That's right. And you've got immunity. Your mom and dad was alive back then. There ain't many people can say that at your age. They say people born before 1950 or before are probably immune to it. Well, you know, our parents was in the age where it, you know, but the whole next generations. They haven't been breastfed as a majority. And they're losing out on all kinds of resistance to things that will attack them in this world. Now think about your faith. Think about your believing on that sure foundation that He is one that nurses you and gives you. He knows what this world's like. He says you're in the world but not of the world. Amen? Amen. And He knows He's been tempted in every way that we're tempted, yet without sin. Amen? Amen? And He's able to pass on to us things that He's taught people for generations on generations and generations. It's not over yet. The church ain't going out. The end of the time's not yet. In the dark ages, they could have said, man, this is all. The church is going out tomorrow. Nothing but a bunch of people living in monasteries and monks and people at key for reading the Bible. And here, look what we've got today. We've got more freedom than we've ever had in our lives. We've got enough freedom to make covenants with death coming and going. Don't write the church off. Don't make a covenant with death on the church and say the church is dead. It ain't dead. We got one that resurrects the dead. He does it every Sunday morning. Amen. He can do it every Wednesday night. Amen. 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 He can resurrect us. Amen. Well, I just can't read that definition some more, though. It means to believe it. It means to build up, to support as a parent would support you through good and bad. As a nurse would take care of you when you're sick. It means to be faithful Huh? It means to trust. And this definition here is so cool, it means to be permanent. Forever. Permanent. Now that's the kind of belief that's different in some people's. I am permanently on the foundation that is sure and steadfast. And because of that, and because of that, verse 18, he's disannulled my covenant with death. Where I used to be cutting covenant with devils. Now I'm cutting covenant with the Prince of, the prince of Life and Prince of Peace and the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yeah. I mean, I've preached a long time. You know what I mean? No. But I, I'm, I'm making a hooking up with life and His blood is now my blood. Yeah. And my blood is now His blood. Amen? Amen. I've had a transfusion. Amen. And when somebody has a transfusion, you know, they get a burst of energy. You can testify to that. 
And that's what happens to me when I hook up with His blood. Now I have a burst of energy and I'm doing stuff I don't normally do. I might have some rhythm too. I don't know. I might be a little bit more creative because the Creator's blood is running in my life. Amen. Amen. That word for to disannul my covenant with death means to cancel it. Just like I decide I don't want the newspaper no more. I cancel my subscription. I say cut the cable off and cancel the satellite. Just don't try to cancel your internet service because then people don't like to take no for an answer. They just keep saying I give it to you for three more months free. And I'll charge your bank account for it forever because if you don't do it in three, we charge you for the last three years. I mean, it's just a nightmare. Walmart specifically, like to never got off their internet service. Like to never. They're hoping you'll forget to call them back. This is on there. Yeah. It means to cancel, to make atonement for. Mm-hmm. He made atonement Jesus for us, didn't he? Yes, he did. It means to disannul. It means to forgive. It means to be merciful. It means to pardon. It means to purge away. And it means to put off. Now I want to take this piece of the message and take it a little different direction. If you smoke 50 years, don't make a covenant with death. If it was your sin that caused the disease, He still said, I will disannul your covenant with them cigarettes. I'll disannul your covenant with that cancer. I'll disannul your exposure to that chemical. I'll disannul. I'll forgive you. I'll pardon you. I'll be merciful to you. What does merciful mean? You don't get what you got coming. Let's see how that second aspect of mm-hmm. making a covenant is. Well, I'm saved now and I love God now, but you know, I smoked all them years or I worked in them chemicals all them years or I worked with asbestos all them years or or my family was crazy all them years and now we just we got this covenant with death and it's all going to go down and down and down. And he says, even if it was your fault and even if you made bad choices and even if you did so many drugs you didn't know what... It's which went up or down was now you got saved, you got all these chemicals running in your body, you don't know what they're going to do to you someday. Don't make no covenant with that mess. Yeah. He's made a covenant with you, and that covenant is merciful. Amen? Amen. That's what it said. Merciful. Pardon. Pardon is where they say you're not guilty anymore, even though you were. That's what a pardon is. If they pardon you up here at the yeah. prison. If the governor pardons you or the president pardons you, you're not just forgiven. You're not guilty. Even if you were guilty, you're no longer guilty. You can own a gun. You can vote. The people that just get out of jail can't hold a gun or a vote. Supposedly. We know the gun part's not right. The vote part I don't know about, but I know the gun part's not right. And the very last word down there, it says to disson, it says to cancel, to make atonement for. So it's not just free because somebody paid for it. Jesus, amen? Yep. It means to disannul, forgive, be merciful, pardon, purge away, and put off. <coughs> Scripture says put off the old man and put on the new. Mm-hmm. But I like put it off. Well, you got to die sometime. Well, let's just put it oh. off. <laughs> amen? amen? Oh, you got to go sometime. Well, I don't got to go now. Let's put it oh. off. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. If he's coming soon, let's put it off. I was watching TV the other morning. I don't watch TV in the morning much because I don't like it to tell me what to think. You know, I just don't like it to start my day, you know, them telling me what to think. Whether it's, you know, and, and I didn't like I watch a news program. I'll turn on Channel 5 because it puts the temperature in the bottom of the corner. Yeah. And it'll have somebody showing the new fashions for a minute and cooking something for a minute and yeah. rearranging an office for a minute, you know, and always now, you know. So goofy crap. Two or three minute segments. And you know, but I just I turn the volume down usually so they won't talk to me because I don't hear them. And I just look at the time, the temperature, and what it's supposed to be through the day so I know what to wear. I don't watch them every day, but I try to sometimes if I don't know it's gonna be warm or cold, that's my big one. The other day I the other day that I turned it on and the volume was still on from something she'd been watching the night before on another channel, you know, home garden or somebody. But I flipped it over there. And they were, uh, had somebody on there babbling, you know, you know, before I could turn the volume down, so, so I heard what they were babbling. Sometimes it's hard to forget what they babble. Mm-hmm. But they was babbling something, you know, and I said, okay, you know, so, so I let them babble a minute, you know, you know, I said one day it'll be, you know, 
You don't have to pay thousand dollars for these pair of shoes. You can have for three hundred. This is a bargain. We can all go out and economize, you know, because the economy's tight. Go for these three hundred dollar shoes, you know, you know, and things like that, you know. And uh, and I was, like I said, I just the other day I, I noticed them just just for a minute, and uh, I can remember what I noticed. I'll tell you, but I can't remember at this moment what I was going to tell you. So. So I don't know what it was. I don't know. That's the problem. <laughs> I know it works a lot of times. If I can tell you, I can't remember what they said, but I can tell you, I can, I can come back. And I figured it would come back to me in a minute, and I was killing time until it, till it came back, but it hadn't come back yet. So, so that's true. But no, well, well it's, it goes with the message. It is the, it's the last part of the message. It is the tie-up to the message. But I don't know... What the story was at this point in time, but it'll come back in a minute because I heard it three times to tell it. Tell it. I should have told it before I forgot it. Mm-hmm. But how do you? I'll, 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 I'll give you the scripture though. How do you disannul a covenant with death? Woman with the issue of blood. She was bleeding for twelve years. Amen. Went to every doctor. Was no better, just worse, and spent all her money. She wasn't even the same. She was worse, and she pressed through the crowd of everybody else that didn't know what life was there and what was right in her possession. She pushed in and she's touched. How did she, how did she make that covenant? How did she this is the how did how did they how do you make a covenant with death by the words of your mouth? How do you disannul a covenant with death? She said if I can touch him, if I can touch the hem of his garment. Yeah, she said, she said, she said, said in herself, if I can touch him, if I can touch him, if I can touch him she did and she was she disannulled that covenant with you going to have to how many people had spoken over her how many doctors had told her there's no hope for you she refused to make a covenant with death and she reached out she made a covenant with life and virtue and power and the thing that God flowed into her because she chose to give him the new covenant and out of the one of death Amen. amen And the other story will come back up. Maybe it's not supposed to be on tape. Father, we bless you this morning for your word. And we thank you, Father, that I have a good memory. And I can remember what you remind me of. (laughs) So remind me, dear Lord. Father, we bless you, though, this morning. And we thank you for doing good things. Things that accompany salvation. Things that go with what you're doing in our life, Father. And we just want to take this chance, Father, to disannul every covenant with death. That we've smoked, so we have to pay a side effect. We've had secondhand smoke, so we have to. We've had cancer, so we have to die of it. We've had this or high blood pressure or disease or any other thing, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have come and made atonement for, deliverance for, that you have battled on our behalf, Lord. That we don't have to die depressed and we don't have to die broke and we don't have to die any which way. We can live and live and live that we see you face to face. Amen. And Father, we bless you this morning for the freedom that we have because you have disannulled our covenants with death. And we thank you for it in the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now I can tell the story. The story about the covenant with death. Channel 5 had a commercial, so I flipped it to Channel 4. Channel 4 has got the weather guy that always has the people that turn 100. Yeah. I don't know, Scott or something? Yeah. Anyway, but, uh, but at any rate, they wasn't doing 100-year-old people. First one up there was like 113. Mm-hmm. Still going and still doing. They must have forgotten they made a covenant they're supposed to die at 70. Yeah. <laughs> or 80. There was one guy in there is 104. That was like 15 people, it seemed like. Maybe 8 or 10, but it seemed like 15. They just kept going. I kept going, huh? And I'm feeling old. This guy, 104-year-old, boy with a dog on saxophone. He's still playing in a band. I see that. You've seen it then. All right, that's the story, though. But you've seen it. He ain't made no covenant with death and decided he had died at 82 because his mama died at 60 or somebody did something the other. I don't even know that they're believers. Every now and then, one will say they credit to their faith and having a clean life, or, you know, one of them will say to having fun, or, you know, they'll say something like that. But there were just a whole list of them that were way past 100. And one of them still blowing that sex on. I'm thinking her trying to blow that little thing up now when she's in the hospital. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm thinking of that. Here's a 104 year old guy here. Blowing sex on. I know. You know? I probably can't blow it enough to make good sound. Remember that shofar? 
You could have given, you couldn't get noise out of that thing. And here's somebody hunting for you. So that was my story. This wasn't on Channel 5. I had to wait until my, yeah. my brain switched. What's on Channel 4? Now I, I couldn't remember. I couldn't too. remember nothing good on Channel 5. But that's what it was. It's on Channel 4. They forgot to make a covenant with death and they're just keeping on living. Yeah. Taking care of other people and doing. They have a purpose. Yeah. And we need to make that same kind of covenant with life. That we're going to live it till we're 110, and we're going to be the one they're talking about. I can't believe you're doing that good at 110. Well, hey, wait till 111. Amen. 120. 120, whatever it is. Yeah, 140. But I don't got to go out. You know, some yeah. people still living by themselves, still moving and going and doing. And there's somebody else over here at 62. You know, we got a couple. We did an older couple that tells there. We did their their van that's got. A, Canvas top that pops up to RV. And they're still traveling around and going, how old are they? Their son's 60 something in the nursing home. Well, they had to be in their 80s. That's why I'm telling you. That encouraged me because I don't want to be too old to camp. And they're out here going. They're going places. And their son's in the nursing home. Not picking on their son in the nursing home. I'm just saying somebody forgot to tell them they're old. Yeah. And who tells you you're old all the time? All the voices from the outside. And don't let that voice get on the inside. You can't sell your life. Because you need to tell you, I'm not making a covenant with old age. There's a man that I've done it. American Motors I have on TV, and he's around the fitness club, and he's 90. Yeah. They have that woman in, in, in Australia. She's the oldest woman athlete. She's 104, and she won her age class. And they said, oh, by the way, there's nobody in her age class. Do you, think? She got shot put. You know, I don't know how far a 104-year-old person can throw it, but it's probably as far as I can throw it. Yeah. That's probably the next well, thing. She forgot to get I old. Because she made a covenant with life and said, this die. And there's people out there waiting to get their social security checks so they can grow up two years and die. You know, they, they've told herself this all their life. Time I get it out of these old, I'll just die. I won't ever play. Don't tell them things. Amen. We're going to live Amen. and declare the word. Amen. See, that's the other verse I'm supposed to use. That verse that says, I will not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. So that's a covenant with life. Amen. I'm going to live long enough and I'm going to see my wife well. I'm going to see my children well. I'm going to see my grandchildren well. You know, I'm just using the examples. I'm going to see they ain't living for God yet. I'm going to live long enough see every one of them live for God. Because yeah. I made a covenant with life. Because yep. I made a covenant with Jesus. And Jesus is the way. Truth life. It sure is.